Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be going through the sample exam questions for the Salesforce Certified Admin exam. Uh, this is the second part of my mini admin course. Um, be sure to like and subscribe uh, for more videos like this. So let's just go ahead and get into it. We're gonna start off with the first question. This one is, what should an ad system administrator use to disable access to a custom application for a group of users? Choose one answer. A, profiles. B, sharing rules. C, web tabs. D, layouts. And the answer is A, profiles. Let's go ahead and go into our setup in Salesforce. And I will show you where this is located. So I, in the quick find, I put profiles. And let's go ahead and go into our custom sales profile. This one is custom to this org. And this is assigned to a group of users and it's usually going to be, well, because of the name, it's gonna be a sales user. You can see that we have our custom object layouts, our field level security, custom field level security and custom app settings. You can see, say we wanted to disable community for a sales user, we could do that here and disable that. Going back to our question, it doesn't quite make sense to do sharing rules, web tabs, or page layouts for a custom application. Let's go ahead and go into question two. Universal containers, containers needs to track the manufacturer and model for a specific car companies. How can the system admin ensure that the selected manufacturer provides the values available for the model? Choose one answer. A, create the manufacturer field as a dependent pick list and the model as a controlling pick list. B, create a lookup field from the manufacturer object to the model object. C, create ma the manufacturer field as, con as a controlling pick list and the model as a dependent pick list. Create a multi-select pick list field that includes both manufacturers and models. If you chose C, then that one is correct. A and C are very, very similar, and we'll go into why C is correct and A is not, but let's look at the other answers. B would be a lookup field from a manufacturer object to a model object. For the Salesforce admin test, you'll want to create the most simple answer. And this creating, it would mean creating a new manufacturer object and a model object, and then a lookup field. That is a lot of work. So you can almost always, if there's an easier answer, then choose that. And creating two new objects would not be the easier answer. D. This one is incorrect, and it is a multi-select multi pick list that includes both manufacturers and models. That's a lot of information, and they wanted to have the correct model and manufacturer. You'd, so you'd have to look that up on somewhere else to make sure that those are matching up um, and that they were both related to each other. And there's just a lot of room for error. So you do want to create a controlling pick list for this. The difference is between a dependent pick list and a controlling pick list. So which one do you want to use? You want to use the manufacturer as the controlling pick list because that one A came first in the question and B it's a lot easier to choose a manufacturer and then a model than to choose a model of a car and then choose the manufacturer. So that's why A is incorrect and C is correct. All right, let's move on to question three. Sales representatives at Universal Containers needs assistant, need assistance from product managers when selling certain products. Product managers do not have 
access to opportunities, but need to gain access when they're assisting with a specific deal. How can a system administrator accomplish this? Choose one answer. A, notify the product manager using only opportunity update reminders. B, enable opportunity teams to allow users to add the product manager. C, use similar opportunities to show opportunities related to the product manager. Or D, enable account teams to allow users to add the product manager. If you chose B, that is the correct answer. Let's go ahead and look at the other answers. A, notify the product manager only using opportunity reminders. This would mean that they aren't, the product manager isn't necessarily assigned to that opportunity. And so this would get kind of lost in all the different reminders and updates that they, the product manager gets in a day. C, use similar opportunities to show opportunities related to the project manager. This again wouldn't be on the specific opportunity that they're discussing and wanting to close the deal on, but you could use opportunity teams to add the product manager to those opportunities that have the same product. D, enable account teams to allow users to add the product manager. While account teams is kind of similar, this would mean that the product manager is over the whole account. And the product the manager is over wouldn't necessarily be on all opportunities within that account, and it might just be one opportunity. So that's why B is the correct answer, and you want to use opportunity teams for the specific opportunity, and then allow the user, the sales user, to add the product manager. All right, let's move on. Number four, which two which two should a system admin consider before importing a set of records into Salesforce? Choose two answers. A, import, the import file should include a record owner for each record. B, currency field values will default to the personal currency of the record owner. C, data should be deduplicated in the import file prior to import. D, validation rules are not triggered when importing data using the import wizard. Again, choose two answers. If you chose A and C, you are correct. The import file should include a record owner for each record, so that way there is a person tied to that record when it's uploaded into Salesforce. And C, data should be deduplicated in the import file before prior to import. From personal experience, it's a lot easier to deduplicate data in a CSV file than it is into Salesforce. So you will want to do that before, and it's just a best practice. Let's move on to number five. Which two statements about custom summary formulas are in reports are true? Choose two answers. Reports can be grouped by a custom summary field, custom summary formula result. B, custom summary formula fields can reference a formula field within a report. C, custom formulas can reference another custom summary formula. D, custom summary formulas can be used in a report built from a custom report type. Again, choose two answers. If you chose B and D, you are correct. Reports cannot be grouped by a sum custom summary formula result, so that's why A is not correct and C is not correct because custom summary formula fields cannot reference another custom summary formula. Okay, thank you for joining me. Be sure and drop down in the comments and ask any questions that you have about this exam or things that you'd like to see in another video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.